You really don't want anyone getting into this case, do you? Jazir discovered a bright orange mud crab on the beach. One can only imagine what it must taste like. I'm just imagining an orange creamsicle mud crab, which sounds disgusting, but I like orange creamsicle. I recovered another one of the bloodlight tomes. Fantastic. Give it here, and this one will translate the texts. This will take but a moment. And... Done. Here is a transcribed copy of the tome. I will keep the original here, safe and sound. Bloodlight Chain. So I'm assuming that the last one's gonna be a, a master level or an even expert level spell. Bloodlight Chain, Bloodlight Bolt that does 50 points of shock damage to health and half to Magicka, then leaps to a new target. Now, interestingly, it really seems like only the first one hurts you. Bloodlight Tendrils, Bloodlight Spells will deal 10 damage to the caster. It's interesting because the others don't say that, but I would imagine that all of them do? I, I would assume each of them does. Let me check outside. No, only the first one does, huh? I feel like that kind of defeats the purpose. No, that's not even hurting me. So, <laughs> yeah, there's really no downside then, I guess. All right. One thing that I was warned about in the comments is that you can mess this quest up. If you go into Korsag or any of the other ruins and get a tome before you go to uh, Jazir as intended, you can break the quest stage a little bit. So that's another thing where I would say that's something to look into. That's definitely something to consider for the author. Because now I don't really want to go anywhere until I'm told to, because I don't want to potentially break anything. I do wish there was some sort of quest stage in which we would ask, like, oh, how do we get to that other island? Whether it means going back to uh, Lady Gwyn, to Guinevere, or something else where it's like, oh, you can find a boat, you know, along the coast. I do think that it would work well to, you know, maybe give us a little bit more direction in that sense. What I will do instead is I am just going to try and find a ship or something along the coast. If I don't, then I guess I'll go back to Guinevere and ask her. We do have what looks like a harbor or a dock over here, so I'm guessing this was kind of the intent. You know, walk in the direction of the map marker, and then you'll find the boat, you'll find the ship, you'll find what you need in order to get across. The Pickled Horker. I- oh, oh, hello. Hello? Okay, you, <laughs> you were, uh... Looking out at the water, just, you know, taking in the view. I, I can't blame you. It's a lovely view. It really, really is. Is there another one behind me? I, I, I heard someone talking, but your lips didn't move. Are you a ventriloquist? No. Not in front of you, at least. Pray to Stendar while you can. Yeah. Victory is yours. I submit. Oh, I'm so glad that you submitted. Uh. It makes it so much easier to kill you. Now, can I use this boat? If I can't, then I'm going to feel a little silly. I don't think I can, which I mean, it's not my boat. It's not my ship. Huh? Yes, here we go. Sorry, I was aiming for the, the fancy boat. I was aiming for the ship. I didn't want to take just the rowboat. Although, for just me, myself, and I, that's probably a much smarter decision. Just take that, not the, uh, the ship meant for a full crew. I already love the amount of greenery on this island. This already has... You know, such a different design from what I saw the first island, and I really like that. Like, this feels much more green, it feels much more lush, it feels much more vertical as well with the fallen 
a tree that you can use as a bridge up there, I would imagine. And I know there's the main quest. I'm not sure if there's really a lot of side quests, so... There's probably a good amount in the mod that's really meant just for exploration Over later there. on. Oh, bandits! Okay, I thought you were just gonna be... More orcs. Well, I, I, I think I heard an orc, though. Also, can we just talk about the sheer difference in difficulty between vanilla enemies and the orcs? Like, looking at the health, looking at the HP on bandits versus the orcs, like, wow. That's just night and day right there. I know I could have broken through their defenses with a heavy attack. I was just saving my stamina. So I will say that the, you know, the Blood Orcs, Clan Ognok, they definitely feel like a little bit more of a challenge. And I assume that was also, you know, the intent as well. I really love the shipwrecks. Oh, uh, hello. Okay. Oh, you, you sidestepped that. I see a note right there. If you don't mind, I'm going to kill you and take the note. I know the bandit chief spawning in with the Daedric plate armor. I think that's just like a leveling thing. It's just a random thing. I don't think that was from the mod itself. We tracked the salt fangs after you chased them out of Braidwith. The cowards are hiding in a fishing hamlet at the eastern end of the isle. They've fortified heavily. It looks like they're ready to go down fighting. A lone ship called the Sea Wolf has been making port occasionally, and we've seen them loading villagers and setting sail in the direction of Skyrim. If you lay in wait with a few warships, they'll be easy pickings. It looks like they brought someone from the mainland, possibly a mercenary. I don't imagine it'll make much of a difference when you go to slaughter them all. So not a side quest, but you know, a little bit of, uh, you know, world building, if you will. I also realize there's not much reason for me to go into some of these chests because it's just really vanilla loot and whatnot, but I'm just taking a look. I'm just seeing if there's anything to grab, uh, knowing that there's not a high chance of it, but eh, why not? But that also means, you know, I may miss a chest here or there because I'm not necessarily expecting there to be something unique in most of these in any of them, frankly. So you do not need to give me exact timestamps of you didn't open that chest. It, it's fine. I'll survive. You'll survive. We're all gonna be fine. Yeah, because... Ooh. Yarlchand is really just on the full other end of the island. Now, here's what I'm wondering. Is the Nord Ruin up here... Uralchund, and it's just pointing me to, like, the back entrance. Because I'm going to try and go up here. I have a sneaking suspicion it's going to be this one up here. We do have a path that kind of leads inland and uphill, so I'm hoping this does lead us directly to the ruin, directly to the barrow. I would be surprised if that barrow, that massive Nord ruin, is not related to the Bloodlight Tome. I really just sat there and waited. I was like, all right, go ahead. Come on, bite me. Let's see what happens. Oh, hey, I was not expecting a werewolf here. I was like, oh, wolves. And all right, you were a little bit of a surprise. So you got me. Congrats. Thornvik Keep discovered. Really like the placement of it. I feel like level design wise, especially exteriors, um, the mod does a really good job. Like that's very well done. Is this going to be Uralchund? Is it? 
I'm wondering. I'm really, really hoping it is, because it looks, you know, big and like it'll be fun to explore. Now, the first room we went into was more so focused on traps. Second one was a mix of portals as a puzzle-solving thing, as well as... Oh! Trying to find the three sigils. So I'm wondering what the kind of hook is going to be for this third one. Alright, down he goes. Still less health than the blood orcs. I don't know if we're going to interact with any of the blood orcs outside, you know, just murdering them. I would love if we could maybe meet the chieftain, talk to him. I think that'd be super cool. Come on, come on, I don't have all day, Mr. Ice Wraith. I'm here for my blood magic books. No, this is not Uralchund. Oh. I hope this is tied to the story then. With a ruin this big, I would want that to be tied to the main story. Well, I was wrong. Let's go all the way around. I feel like we have to go kind of up north and then west. Is that going to be underwater? It might be. Honestly, it also looks like I might be able to just keep on going west from here and then curve on down. So maybe that's going to be the best way to do that. I really didn't think it was going to take me this long to get to the third ruin. I thought it was going to be a little bit more straightforward. But I also think this would have been a great time to have, like, Guinevere or someone else as a follower for this. Just so we have, like, someone maybe talking to us about the islands and everything lore-wise, world-building-wise, as we make our way there. I really feel like I'm going the wrong way for this. Like, <laughs> wherever this ruin is, I feel like I'm going the wrong way. But, hey, I'm just following the marker as best I can. Okay, I can see the submerged ruin. And it does kind of line up with the fact that they said, hey, by the way, you know, these were all buried however long ago. Ooh, submerged dwarven ruin. There you go. There's the, uh, the twist. Wait. Ah, 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 why was that so loud? Holy shit! Oh my god! Oh, that'll be lower for you. Both my screaming and the audio, but... Oh, dear god! That was terrifying! Don't like that. Don't like that at all. What I was gonna say is that as I opened the door, it said, hey, it's barred from the other side. So I, I'm wondering if I'm even doing this the right way, but I followed the marker. God, that was terrifying. Oh my poor ears. And we had, like, the spooky ambiance when we entered the other ruins, but that was just a world apart. Oh, wow. I was expecting a little, like, ooh, that we had in the others, but I certainly did not expect that. Oh, okay, I do like that he has, you know... The Bloodlight spells that he has a different color. That That's nice. That I'm happy with. Yeah, I feel like I just absolutely skipped everything to get here. So, here's what I'm going to do. I just want to see real quick. Let me see if there's supposed to be another entrance to Uralchund. Yes, okay. 
There is supposed to be another entrance. The marker is unfortunately not pointing there. That makes a lot more sense because we absolutely would have just skipped through all of that. All right. Um, I don't know how easy it would be to fix the marker placement for that because I know that quest markers sometimes just prioritize the wrong way, but that's definitely something to look into as well. At least this time, I'll know that there is really loud yelling coming, but at least this time I'll be aware, be wary, and prepared for the blood-curdling scream that deafened me. Imagine if I had just <laughs> gone against my better judgment, and I just said, oh, clearly that's the entire dungeon, clearly that is all of Uralchund. Let me just grab this and go. And then you just lose out on the entirety of that dungeon, the entirety of that quest, and you go, oh, that was stupid easy. I don't know what it is, but I just love how much it rains in the mod. I don't know. There, there's something about it. I feel like it adds to the world. I, I feel like it does kind of add to the tone. And I do like that. I do appreciate that. I feel like the Dwarven Moon is going to be up in the mountain, so maybe... Yeah, it looks like it's still up in the mountain, so I have to find a path up there. I obviously don't know how many other people are going to have the issue where the marker points to the exit, but given that it let me in despite saying the door is barred, I have a feeling that some people are going to miss that and essentially skip the dungeon in its entirety. I'd be curious to see how many other people that happens for. Okay, now I kind of see how they want us to get to the Dwarven Ruin. We have to go up towards the lighthouse here, and then there's another log bridge, fallen tree connecting them. Okay. Yeah, because looking at the Overland map, looking at, you know, the bird's eye view map, it's not exactly clear, so... I was, I was getting a little lost trying to figure it out. I think we're finally on the right path. I think I'm finally going where I need to in order to reach Ralchund. I do also like the fact that it's a dwarven ruin. When we first heard Jazir talking about like, oh, offhand saying, oh yeah, dwarves were here too, one thing that immediately came to mind was the idea of, oh, wouldn't the dwarves also maybe take an interest in the Bloodlight Tomes and want to harness it for themselves? So I do like that we get to see that. I do like that the author did, you know, go that route. Just wanted to see if there's anything in the lighthouse. There's not. Even the uh, the door is just kind of there. I feel like that'd be good if that was boarded up then and made just completely inaccessible. I also realize it probably just sounds like I have nothing but critiques. I, I'm very much impressed with a lot of what I've played in the mod, but... I'm also... Not opposed to saying, like, oh, this is a good way to, you know, improve upon it. There's already so many things that have been done well, but it doesn't mean that we should necessarily stop. It's like there's always ways to improve, there's always ways to grow, and uh, with how nitpicky I am, I am going to be able to name all the ways that you can improve it, potentially. All right, here we go. Just don't look down and don't fall off. And I'm probably just going to take my earbuds out for this, because even though I know not to get scared this time, I also just don't want to be absolutely deafened. I will say, though, that the me being deafened part might not be from the mod itself, but because I do have a mod on that boosts the, the range and the volume of dialogue 
volume, essentially. The reason being that sometimes vanilla dialogue is a little quieter than, you know, you really want it to be, especially for audio balancing, especially for uh, video stuff. Now, I just need to get inside. Oh. Pfft. Okay. That's incredibly anticlimactic as an entrance. <laughs> Holy shit. I just took the earbuds out and placed them on my lap. And I heard the scream through my earbuds, like, from my lap. Oh my god. Yeah, that is not the entrance to Uralchund that I expected. I think it would have been fine had I not spent so long just trying to find the original entrance, the correct entrance. I feel like I would not be as... I won't even say peeved. I, I I won't I wouldn't have been as underwhelmed had I just been led to the correct entrance in the first place. But I was looking for like, you know, a typical dwarven ruin entrance. I'm just taking a look around. I will say though, I love the design of Uralchan. The fact that it is this sort of much more narrow dwarven city. Dwarven cities are always so like grand and big and massive and having these smaller passageways that are propped up by you know like mining tunnels and braces and whatnot. Like to me this looks phenomenal. This might not be as big of a dungeon as some of the others, this might be a much more straightforward dungeon compared to some of the others. But we do get our big crunchy bugs. So, you know, if you like eating crickets, if you like eating roaches or anything like that, man oh man, you're in luck. Just come on down to Uralchund and eat your heart out. I'll just take all that, why not? Might as well. I killed the bug guardian defending it. Did I go the wrong way? Because this seems like a dead end right here. I did experience a crash while looking around and trying to figure out if I had missed something. And the way that these ruins are scripted is that the scream, the sound effect, whatever that kind of, you know, set sound is for each of the dungeons, it plays any time you load into it. So if you crash if you lose progress and you have to reload, you're gonna hear that scream each time. There was a, a way forward from that room I was in, from that chamber I was in. I just missed... Well, I missed the one way to go. Oh god, okay. After the scream, everything's got me on edge now. After the scream, even just the little bad effect has me on edge. Ooh, I like the five dwarven heads together. Yeah, they really designed some really interesting, some really cool looking locations. Ooh, I really thought that was gonna kill you. I do hope we see more automatons rather than just that one that I had seen at the very, very end. Because I'd love to see maybe some more of the... Oh! Oh! Why? Oh, no. Don't tell me I'm... Pfft. Don't tell me I'm stuck in here. Yep, I am. Alright, I'm gonna TCL. Uh, is that cheating? Yes. Am I using it just to fix that? Also, yes. Ooh, yeah. I, I fell straight through, all because I was trying to get a better angle on you. And I missed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't you wag your little tail at me. You're gross. And you're also having a little bit of a seizure right now. You, you walked up the ledge, you were climbing on your side. Bad day for you. 
Yeah, I, I fell like straight in there and there wasn't really a way out. Oh, and the spiders also... Okay, alright. I was gonna say the spider's flipping. Nope, the spider just walked right through that. Can I walk through it? I, I can. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Like, I have... Yeah, I, I have collision on, obviously, or I'd be falling through the floor right now, but... That's just... That's throwing me off a little bit here and there. It also just has me terrified that I'm gonna fall through even more stuff. Like that! No, that was intentional, though. Okay. Oh! That was a trap. Oh, and they dropped me down. Oh, all right. That was a good one. Y you got me. Didn't scream as much, but you definitely got me. I'm wondering if there's a way back up. Although we have essentially reached the end. Like, I know where we are now. Yeah, I really love the bloodlight spheres and everything. The fact that they're a different color, that alone just, you know, that already makes them feel much more unique. And I love that. I see you. And this time I was ready. This time I was prepared. You certainly weren't. You very much were not ready for me. I just want to see if I can get back around there to where the spiders were, because I do feel like I missed out on some of the dungeon then. I I think if I go through that door there, it might lead to it. Do you like the, the spiders just kind of hanging out right over there? Listen, they don't like fire, and I like things that they don't like, so I am just going to heat them up a little bit. Oh, no, sure. Oh, it did not kill them. Okay, I, I can get to them, though. Yeah, I I just really want to fight more Bloodlight Automatons. I really, really do. I feel like that would have been a much more fun enemy type than uh, just more spiders and chores, frankly. Let me go through it. Let me see if I can get back up to where I fell down from. Although this is taking me deeper into the dungeon, so I don't know. Oh, that's the exit. Okay. Never mind. That's why it looked mildly, slightly familiar. No, maybe I just can't... Get back up there, then. Oh. Uh, <laughs> hello. Is this how you were able to infuse your automatons with the bloodlight magic? Maybe. Or it's just your typical dwarven experiments gone wrong. Because frankly, you know, they do this a lot. Oh. Just some apocryphal tomes. You know, no big deal. Oh, those Dwemer. Now get ready for more screams, because I'm ready for there to be a few more screams. Yep, 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 yep. I mean, that's a vanilla scream, so that's okay. That's not as bad. Now, I know there's at least... Okay, I was gonna say, there were at least two phantasms, but I could have sworn I had seen a third in there somewhere. Oh, just one more. There you go. Beautiful. I'm just gonna take your uh, soul gems as well. I'm gonna search you. Daedric Mace of Bloodlight. I keep on forgetting which ones I have. So I have the mace already, so I don't need another. I'll take the dagger, doesn't weigh anything really. And I know I have a sword, so we don't 
need that. Well, let's bring that back to Jazir. That is our final Bloodlight Tome. And I'm really curious to see what comes next. Yeah, so there's no actual bar on the door. So that's why I was able to come through. Even though it showed the message, you know, <laughs> there was nothing stopping me from coming on in. Oh, it still said it too. It still said barred from the other side. Would you look at that? 